Hi guys, welcome to episode three of Unethical Psychology. I'm going to do a couple more of these Unethical Psychology videos and then I'll give it a rest for a while. They'll just sit there as uh, in the psychology videos playlist and if people request more then I will make more. Anyway, so today we are looking at drug addiction. Particularly we are focusing on the Rat Park experiments. Every now and again the media picks up on the Rat Park. This was for just an example BBC article from 2013 which details the Rat Park experiments give some critique, um, stating that the Rat Park experiments don't actually give us a very good grounding scientifically. But for the bulk of this video, I want to go to the horse's mouth. And this is the author and the experimenter, Bruce Alexander. He's published in reputable scientific journals one of his earliest papers on screen now um, at the results of these experiments my focus is on the ethics of um, the experiments but i'll kind of give you a quick rundown about what and why the experiments were supposedly conducted and then i'll give you my thoughts on the ethics so, Bruce Alexander, he was an experimental psychologist between 1960 and 1980, uh, where laboratory rats lived in very, very small cages, very unnatural conditions. I dare say that these rats were very unhappy and they were used for rats are very well used in psychological um, experiments for all for all sorts of reasons um one being that they are very intelligent creatures and they they learn readily so they can be using a lot of learning experiments as we'll see in the next episode but in this particular experiment they were inducing drug addiction so they were giving them morphine like substances in their water getting them addicted and studying the effects the question here do you think that this would qualify as psychological abuse of rats of course it is rats are highly intelligent creatures rats are highly gregarious they're very sociable creatures they they live in social group big social groups they roam around so being in solitary confinement is one major issue but also in tiny confines major issue plus the fact that they're inducing drug addiction in them right nothing about that situation <laughs> is ethical is it at all um but alexander started to think about the conditions that rats were in in these experiments and and thought well actually you know if we want to look at the effects of drug addiction what on earth is that egg i do not even care alexander started to say well keeping the rats in highly stressful tiny conditions really unnatural conditions it's not really telling us an awful lot about addiction because you know if a human being was you know no matter who you are if you're put in solitary confinement in, in, in a tiny cell and you were given drugs <laughs> you know you'd become addicted right because you'd be bored out of your skull well so were the rats so what he did and this is what was really inventive about this study um, was he studied drug addiction but in a much more naturalistic environment so this was um, the rat park so these are pictures of the rat park this is an aerial view of the north wing so this is a quite a, a big big enclosure rats were given lots of things to do um they're still obviously under you know experimental conditions they're still having the influence of humans and and so on and so forth 
but they were allowed to uh, live in large groups. They were allowed to mate and have babies and just live a natural as possible life in this large park. What they did was compared the drug intake of rats housed in a reasonably normal environment uh, with rats kept in isolation. So unfortunately, this wasn't a mercy mission on behalf of Bruce Alexander. This was very much part of an experiment. So even though these lucky rats were allowed to live in a naturalistic environment, there was a control group of rats who were still living in isolation. So don't don't anybody think that Bruce Alexander is some kind of saviour, because he certainly isn't, right? He's an experimental psychologist. He's doing what he's paid for, right? He's doing what he's paid for. So these are just pictures of the rat park, having a chill out. Um, so there's various kind of different, different phases of the experiment. Um, so they ran several different experiments con uh, comparing the drug consumption of rats in the rat park. So they were given the option of drugs, <laughs> as well as were the rats who were living in solitary confinement. In virtually every experiment, rats in the solitary confinement consumed more drug solution um, in every variation because they're bored out of their skull. Whereas the rats in the rat park had loads of stuff to do. They don't want to become drug addicts. Actually, you know, the, the drugs to the rats, they wouldn't want them. They wouldn't want them because they don't taste very nice. So the rat park research attracts a lot of attention and it still does. It still does because it brings into, it, it brings into question the whole concept of addiction. Addiction isn't as cut and dried as people make out. Even if a rat was previously addicted to morphine before it entered the rat park, it would still avoid the drugs, much more likely to avoid the drugs than those that continue to live in solitary conditions. So the upshot is addiction perhaps is a symptom of environmental or personal distress um, and move someone out of and put someone in conditions that are conducive to their to positivity to um, to growth addiction naturally becomes much less likely to continue there were some controversies that there were some non-replications lots of unanswered questions um, that you can you can read about in Bruce Alexander's um, article, um, which is quite long, and this this is his web page. I'll leave I'll leave a link to his web page um, in the uh, description box. But ethically, can we justify the use of rats in this example? That's the question I need. As a psychology professional myself, can we find out more by using experiments on rats than we could just by observing addicted people who have become addicted from their own free choice. My answer to that is yes and no. Alexander was right that there is absolutely no way that exploring addiction in any animal or in any human in such unnatural and horrific circumstances as in a lab in solitary confinement in a tiny box. We're absolute waste of time. Exploring drug addiction in naturalistic environments, however, feels better. It feels better because the rats have a choice as to whether they want to take the drugs or not. However, they're still in captivity. They have brethren who are a control group, who are under stressful and horrible circumstances. 
this is not a, a, a mercy mission. This is not looking at cute little rats and saying, oh, you're so good because you're not addicted. Nothing like that at all. I wonder whether the same findings could have been gleaned from natural investigations, honest and natural investigations of humans, and if the, the investment had been made in into the study of human addiction at that time, then I question whether the Rat Park was ever needed anyway. Bye, guys.